So our next presenter has another piece of awesome. Uh, Jameson, Jameson, sorry, I keep messing up his name, he has a different look at building things. It's something kind of unique, but it's, it's something that all of us could do if we chose to participate in it. It takes on an art form of its own. I'm not going to say anything more about it. Jameson Dungan. What is synthetic biology? Biology is technology. Metabolism is an information process. Life is software, digital code that can be hacked. Metabolism is an information process. Genes are linear sequences of digital executable code. A tree is running a software program on a chemical processor that inputs water, carbon dioxide, energy, and outputs cellulose, or wood. Wood is created from the remixed atoms of air and water. So why can't we hack the system and reprogram the software of life? We can and we do with the aims of producing materials, polymers, energies and fuels, pharmaceuticals, food, water, structure, and architecture. Imagine being able to do all of this, but not with the brute force techniques the chemical industrial complexes use today, using extreme temperatures and pressures, harsh acids, and toxic chemicals. With biology, all reactions occur at standard temperature and pressures, with no unwanted byproducts, all running on sugars and sunlight. All we have to do is learn to program nature's chemical nanomachines, and the software literally builds the hardware, and the hardware self-replicating. Engineers want to standardize biology for ease in engineering. Like Lego blocks, you have bio bricks, modular parts that connect together into universal supporting chassis, such as yeast, bacteria, E. coli, viruses, bacteria. There's now the registry of standard biological parts, a parts catalog where you can build plug and play and parts that snap together. All open source code for DNA hackers in the biopunk community to experiment with. Much like the homebrew computer club where kids were experimenting around in their garages, which gave rise to Apple, biopunks today are laying the foundation of the future microbe soft, which will bring about the second industrial revolution. You have iGEM, the International Genetically Engineered Machines Competition, where you have the world's best gene hackers meeting up and exchanging ideas all of which are undergraduate students or younger. You have people creating microbes that sequester arsenic and other heavy metals in water, hack the live bacteria in yogurt to produce Prozac, cancer-fighting beer, THC-producing yeast, landmine-detecting flowers, LED yeast arrays, bacteria that can grow cracks in buildings back together. Mitchell Jill Hockham and Rachel Armstrong and others are designing whole buildings and cities that grow and repair their own architecture while adapting to local conditions and cleansing the environment around them. Angela Belcher is using viruses to grow batteries and diatoms to grow glass in the aims of getting microbes to grow entire photovoltaic solar panels. Yeah. Alchemy paved the road to chemistry, which led to the whole synthetic organic chemical industrial complex we have today. This is what is needed for synthetic biology. Biology is now an information science. Using math and formulas that yield predictive powers, we can model and simulate cell biology and genetics ultimately being able to design and engineer entire systems before constructing them. Genome compilers, protein folding prediction, mail order DNA, these are just some of the things that are being designed and abstracted for genetic engineering with drag and drop component and features for graphical user interfaces. Places like DIY Bio, GenSpace, BioCurious, Hacteria, and other biohacker spaces are springing up all over where you don't need a degree in biochemistry to splice genes. You just need passion, curiosity, adventure, and imagination to be a citizen scientist. Biopunks feel access to information and science shouldn't be limited to the few elite scientists in their ivory towers with expensive lab equipment. So we're developing low-cost equipment with off-the-shelf parts, democratizing science to all. I've repeatedly gone to iGEM. I've visited GenSpace. I've met with people at the forefront of the field, such as Andrew Hessel, Drew Indy, Rob Carlson, even Nobel laureate James Watson. I've seen and done it all. I'm tired of being just a fanboy and sitting on the sideline. So I've started up my own lab. I've prototyped an incubator, a centrifuge, a gel electrophoresis box. I've even bought a set of pipettes on eBay. There's future plans of building a PCR machine from the Open PCR project. I'm passionately curious and don't have time to wait for answers. How would you like to hack the source code of life? 
How would you like to work with a 13.7 billion year old engineering toolkit? I invite you to help me start a lab where we can empower individuals and put the tools in his hands of as many people as possible, where biotechnology is social, global, ubiquitous, and cheap, one where we can design and engineer a world where anything is possible and we are limited only to our imagination. Be a scientist, change the world, eclipse the past, usurp the future. <laughs> Thank you.